Well, unless you've been in a hole somewhere, you probably know how all this ended up. In the late 1990s, fueled by new information technologies and the rise of the dot-com economy, Americans began spending as if there was no tomorrow. It was like the 1920s all over again. Everybody wanted to borrow money. New Deal restrictions requiring prudence from lenders were removed with bipartisan gusto. The government lent cash to banks at rock-bottom interest rates. Banks offered loans to nearly everybody, whether they had good credit ratings or not. They bought houses, cars, hot tubs, leaf blowers. Don't you just hate those things? Noisy and smelly. With everyone spending, including speculators who hoped to quickly resell houses they bought, housing prices soared. The GDP bubbled up. But there was one problem. Wages weren't keeping up with rising prices. In fact, between 2001 and 2006, while labor productivity in America grew by 20%, the median wages for workers actually fell by 3%. Some people couldn't keep up with their mortgages. Banks foreclosed, housing prices fell, and banks with big loans outstanding started falling too. The housing bubble The whole church of the trickle-down was falling apart. It looked like curtains for the economics of greed. But remember the golden rule? Yep, those with the gold make the rules. So all of us were forced to write a bailout check by Treasury Secretary Henry Paulson to the very bankers and speculators who created the mess in the first place. They gambled, lost big, then won big at our expense. Nice work if you can get it.